If we have to hold near an airport because it's very busy with traffic or there's some weather passing through, we need to know how long we can stay in the air for before we have to divert and land immediately. So we're going to take a look at that in this class and figure out how to calculate our endurance. Hi, I'm Grant and welcome to the ninth class in the performance series. Today we're going to be taking a look at endurance. Endurance is how long we can stay in the air for, and it's essentially another measure of efficiency, just like range was in the previous class. There are a few subtle differences between the two, so it's important to understand range as well as endurance so that you don't get caught out in the exam or indeed in the real world. The time that an aircraft can stay in the air is known as endurance. And to maximize our endurance, we basically need to minimize the fuel flow into the engines and therefore the fuel burn in the engines. This means that endurance is inversely proportional to the fuel flow, because if we have more fuel flow, we have less endurance, inverse proportions. We also can think of the fuel flow in terms of specific fuel consumption times thrust required or drag, which is how much fuel we use per unit of thrust that we need um, at that time in flight. And the thrust required, sorry, is equal to the drag. We can therefore make an equation for endurance that looks like this. So endurance varies according to one over specific fuel consumption multiplied by drag. And notice it's not the equal symbol, um, but it's the varies according to. This is because it's not as simple as that, and we need to consider a few other factors which we're gonna have a look at. So if we think about the speed that we would um, need to fly to stay in the air for the longest possible time to have maximum endurance, we have to have a low specific fuel consumption and drag and the lowest amount of drag we can have is when we're at VMD. That's for a jet. Propeller endurance is very similar, but because we're talking about propellers, fuel flow is equal to specific fuel consumption times power required. This means that our equation becomes endurance varies according to one over SFC times power required. And again, we can see from this equation that the speed for endurance to be maximized would be where we have a low specific fuel consumption and a low amount of power required, which occurs at VMP when we're flying in a propeller. A few things will play a role in endurance, which is why our equation is only vary according to rather than equal um, to get the lowest amount of fuel flow. Mass is the first of these influencers. If we think about the drag and power curves, we can see why. A heavier aircraft basically needs more lift, therefore producing more induced drag as a result. This means that we have a drag curve which is further up and to the right, and it would be the same thing with the power required line. This means to fly that to fly at the speed for best endurance, VMD, we need to fly faster. And by flying faster, we need more thrust, which burns more fuel as a result. It's the same thing for a propeller, there is more power required, so we need to spin the propeller faster and have the engine going at a higher RPM and we therefore burn more fuel. For any mass changes, there's a cool estimation trick we can use for the questions. Um, if we're flying at the correct speed, if we're flying at VMD or VMP, because at that point, the variations are proportional because basically if we go slower or faster, we get more drag. Um, but basically, yeah, it's uh, new old equals new over old. So new mass over old mass equals new fuel flow over old fuel flow. And it can be quite useful in exams to gauge an estimation. And let's have a look at an example. An aircraft is holding overhead Gatwick at a flight a height of 3,000 feet. Its mass is 50,000 kgs and it has a fuel flow of 2,400 kilograms per hour. If the aircraft holds for 30 minutes, what will the new fuel flow be? And then you could use that to figure out sort of endurance calculations. So we'll write down our equation, new over old equals new over old. This will be mass over here and fuel flow FF over here. So our new mass is going to be half of the fuel flow because we're burning, that's kilograms per hour. We're only going for 30 minutes. So our new mass is going to be 50,000 minus uh, 1,200 over the old mass, which is 50,000. 
and our new fuel flow is what we're trying to figure out and our old fuel flow is 2,400. So that is um, 48,800 over 50,000 equals N over 2,400. Rearrange that, 48,800 times 2,400 over 50,000 equals our new fuel flow, which if you put it into a calculator, equals 2304. It's not exact, but it's a good estimation. So you know that as we get lighter, we're gonna burn less fuel. That sort of adds up. Returning to the influencers then. Altitude is an important one to think about. So the best altitude for endurance is where we have the lowest specific fuel consumption. And in a jet, that's where the engine operates in its designed RPM, usually about 90 to 95%. Of the maximum. This occurs normally at a high altitude because the engines are working hard to force enough mass of air through the engines and engine designers choose 90-95% for efficiency because this is where the jet spends most of its time in the cruise up high so it sort of makes sense. In practice though when we're thinking about endurance it's normally when we're holding near an airport which means we're very unlikely to be doing that up at a nice cruising altitude so for a jet aircraft the endurance is reduced as we're lower down because we're not going to be operating in this um, ideal range. So as alt increases, the specific fuel consumption goes down and the drag would also go down, meaning the endurance goes up. And then if you flip that, as we get lower, we're going to burn more fuel, we're going to get more drag. It's actually quite significant on jets how much your endurance is reduced when you go down to lower altitudes. For a propeller, it's slightly different. If we're up high, the power required curve moves up and to the right. This is because if we're higher up in less dense air, we need to fly faster in order to produce the same amount of lift as lower down. And the speed for best endurance, VMP, is higher. And that's a higher amount of power required. So power required goes up if we go up in altitude, which means that we're gonna get lower endurance as a result. So it's the opposite to a jet. If we're lower down, we're gonna be flying at a slower speed for VMP, our endurance speed, which means we need less power required, and that means our endurance goes up. So wind does not influence our endurance. This is because we aren't thinking about distances along the ground, uh, just time in the air. A strong headwind might slow us down across the ground, but that doesn't matter. If we're in the hold, we're near the airport, and as long as we can stay up in the air for 20 or 30 minutes, it doesn't really matter if we're covering X amount of distance on the ground. We just are interested in how long we're gonna spend in the air. In summary then, I think of range and endurance as being both sort of measures of efficiency. They're very closely linked and there can be possibility to confuse them both. Just think of range as distance, endurance as time, and then you should hopefully be able to work it out. And another thing I like to think of is jet, equal drag, prop equals power. P and P, prop is all to do with power required. So if we think about range for a second, a bit of a refresh on the previous class. So the equation for range is either the truer speed or the ground speed, if you're thinking about specific ground range, over the specific fuel consumption times drag, which is just the fuel flow. The speed we need to fly is 1.32 VMD, the tangent to the drag curve, where our ratio of um, thrust to drag is at its maximum. The altitude that we get the best range is up high. And if we think about a propeller, it's the same equation except we're substituting in power required instead of drag. The speed for that is at 1.32 VMP, which just so happens to be the speed for minimum drag. And the altitude depends on the manufacturer's design, but it's basically where we have the throttle open. So in today's class, we looked at endurance, which varies according to one over the specific fuel consumption times drag for a jet aircraft. And we basically want to have the least amount of drag, which is why we fly at VMD. And it's also why we fly up high. The second reason for flying up high is that's where the engines are supposed to be. Um, sorry, that would be the other way around. That's where the engines are supposed to be flown at. So they're flying in a very efficient range of uh, speeds, RPMs. For a propeller, again, we're just substituting in power required. 
and we want to basically fly where our power required is the lowest, that'll be VMP. And if we are high up in altitude, or if we're lower down, sorry, that means our drag curve moves down into the left. So our speed at the bottom of that curve will be lower, requiring less thrust and um, less power, sorry, and therefore we get a better endurance as a result.